Hi, Eddie here from Aussie Power Sports. Today at APS headquarters, we're going to be fitting our scrub bar kit to the Yamaha R-Max. The scrub bar kit consists of rock sliders, bull bar and fender protection. Right, let's get into the workshop and get it fit. Eddie from Aussie Power Sports. I'm back here with our R-Max 2 after fitting the skid plate kit to this machine. And we're going to put our big heavy duty scrub bar on it next. So it consists of the heavy duty front bar, fender protection, and then rock sliders. We're going to start with the central part of the bar. The first step here is to remove some of the factory stuff so we can get into the, the chassis and subframe to mount our bar to it. First thing to come off is the roll of fair lead for the winch. Yeah. Split pin out, so let's take the hook off. And the fair lead comes off. Look like after that, this front part of the skid plate kit, or your plastics if you don't have a skid plate kit, will come off next. So we've got the front nose plate off and the fair lead off. There's a bit more disassembly to happen uh, before we can put the bar on. We're going to have to take the second half of the front skid plate off and then remove this whole front subframe, which will be this whole piece as well. Um, now that incorporates the winch mount, so we're going to have to actually disconnect the winch from the wiring. So that when that comes off, the winch can come off with it. We can then take the winch off once the bar's out, put it onto our bar, which has the, uh, an integrated winch mount as well, put it all back on and then just rewire it up. Um, so there's these two bolts at the front that need to come off and one bolt either side that need to come off. So these are the two bolts at the front that need to come out. And then this bolt on the side, which is what's bolting the winch mount bracket on. And same on the other side here. Um, as well as, need to pull the, the wires off the winch so when it drops out we don't damage the wiring. Okay so I'm going to start with taking the rest of this bash plate off because it uses the same mounts as the uh, subframe here. Now this should be able to be reinstalled once the bar's on. Uh, the nose piece won't be required because the bar actually come down where the nose piece was. Just loosen those to start with. And I'll get under and just undo the two rear mounts. step here is to remove the winch off the back of the OEM bar. So it should just be four bolts going up the underside here. Then we'll mount that onto the integrated winch mount on our scrub bar. So then when we mount the scrub bar on, it's all done and all we gotta do is just hook up the wiring once it's on. So we'll uh, 
Just go ahead and do that. Uh, to 12 mil head. And we'll reuse those OEM bolts when bolting the winch back into our bumper. So there we have the winch. And we can put this bar off to the side now. So now we're going to reinstall the winch onto our bar. Uh, this will be much easier to do while the bar is laying face down, I believe. Um, you'll notice that this bar has eight holes, four on this side, four on this side. That's to allow the fitting of different winches. So narrow body winches use the inside four holes, wide body winches use the outside four holes. It's just if your machine doesn't come with a winch pre-installed like this one did, and you want to add a winch, it just gives you the choice of uh, different sizes and um, brands of winch. They are the standard narrow and wide body um, winch mount holes, so should cover most winches out there today. Now we're now going to mount the winch to our scrub bar. Uh, this bar is in the orientation it will be in when it goes up back onto the machine. The terminals were on the passenger side when I pulled this winch off the factory bar, which means it's going to be orientated that way. Now, another thing to be careful of is you want your winch cable where it comes out to be at the same side as where you bolt the winch onto. Um, it's called pulling at the bottom which means it'll go like that, because that's where all your strength is. If you're pulling from the top, you've got all that leverage working on the four mounting bolts, versus pulling at the bottom, where it's much closer and can't get the same amount of force acting on the mounts. Now this winch is a wide body winch. So we're going to use the outside four holes in the scrub bar plate. So just get a couple of threads in. It's hard to hold it, but you've still got wiggle room to line the other two up. Okay, that's the winch remounted, well, reinstalled onto our bar. Um, so the next step will be to get our bar onto the machine. I've had a costume change. <laughs> we've got the OEM bumper off. Uh, we've taken the front part of the skid plate off. Uh, so what we need to do is reinstall the back half of the front skid plate against the chassis. Um, and now we'll bolt our scrub bar bracket through the front of the skid plate that will hold our scrub bar. So the first step to mounting the scrub bar is to put the first lower bracket in. Return at the top, the two holes through the bracket will line up with the two slots in the front of the skid plate and the OEM thread in the chassis. And we reuse the OEM bolts here. Make sure it's nice and tight at this point, because you won't get back to it again. So the next, the next part of the install is to actually mount the scrub bar with the winch uh, pre-installed on the scrub bar, if you're running a winch, onto the front here. 
and we'll have a bolt either side that goes into the, the welded nuts on this bracket that we've just installed. And then on the winch plate on our scrub bar, there's a threaded nut on the inside of this um, winch plate. It'll slide in between these tabs on the chassis. Bolt will go through and pick up the welded nuts there. Four bolts into four welded nuts on our scrub bar. Now this scrub bar with the winch is probably over 25, getting close to 30 kilos. So trying to hold it and thread bolts into um, nuts by yourself would be not impossible. So if you've got a second person, now would be the time to get them to give you a hand. Okay, that's pretty close for the bottom. Uh, lift the right up a bit if you can. So I've just got the bottom two bolts in finger tight. So all four bolts in. It can be a bit of a uh, hold your tongue right and wiggle to get the um, bolts and threads to line up. But so that's the four bolts on. We leave them loose at this stage, um, which will just give us a bit of adjustment while doing the rest of it. So front bar is on. The next step is to put the rock sliders um, down the side of the machine and then we'll link them both together with the fender protection side rail tubes. So the first step to doing the rock sliders is to remove this plastic cover. Uh, on the four seater version, you have a door here, so it's not required to remove the cover, but on the two seater you do. And you got a bolt down here, a bolt here, a bolt here on the front side, then around on the back, two bolts up the top, and another two bolts on the inner of the flare. You've also got three clips at the back and one clip at the top. Okay, so we're gonna remove this plastic cover. Now obviously this will go back on, so keep all your bolts. And once all the bolts are out, there's a clip at the top that just comes straight up. There's three at the back. Now the top one's just a straight tab, so you just sort of give it a wiggle and a pull. But the next two on the inside of them have a little, like an angle and then a, a straight that plastic holds onto. So they sort of need a small screwdriver and a bit of manipulating until you can get them out. Yeah, that tab where my fingers are. It's got a little sort of return on it. So when it pushes into the, the slot in the other piece of plastic, it clips. So you need to just sort of give a bit of, little bit of pressure, obviously not too much, I'm not gonna break anything on these two as you wiggle it out. So the next step is to install the rock slider. So first step of installing the rock slider is just to loosen the front fenders. So just need to remove two bolts behind the tire here, one up the top, one at the bottom. And again, you need to keep those bolts because I need to go back once our bracket's installed. So you just have a bracket that goes through the chassis rail in on behind this wheel here. So you just need to be able to pull that out of the way to get into it. So this is the bracket that will sit on the outside of the rail. And on the inside of the chassis rail is the corresponding bracket with the welded nuts. So that they will sandwich through uh, one wall of the chassis rail, mould up in two places and give a nice strong front connection. So with your threaded nut bracket, slide it up next to the factory rock slider in behind the chassis. Hold it in position. Preload that. And then your bracket through the hole in the chassis with a bolt. Once you've got these two in loose, they need to be tightened up at this point because once the rock slider 
goes on, it'll cover these bolt heads and you won't be able to get to them. So at the rear of the OEM rock slider, below the plastic cover that's been removed from here, is to get to this bracket here. We have a U-clamp with three welded nuts on it, and it'll slide up from underneath and give welded nuts either side, and we'll drop a bolt down here into that middle welded nut, which will hold it firm. And that'll give us two fixing points at the top of the rock slider. I'll install this rear bracket now with the longer M8 dome head with a washer. Now you want to get that finger tight in there. It gives us a bit of adjustment on the outer two. So this is the main part of the rock slider, sort of like a channel. And the way it'll go on is like so. There's the two mounting points at the front here on the bottom side, which will mount into the bracket that we installed at the front. Four, these big four holes on the tabs, which will be a bolt with a countersunk washer and an insert nut. Um, and then you've got the two at the back here from that rear bracket. So it's fixed in place quite a few locations. Now because it sits basically like that, you can bolt your front fenders back together now. And we'll put the, put the bolts that holds the plastics back together. Then we'll do the underside mounting points on this first. All right. So now that the plastic's back on at the front, Roughly line it up. Now I'm just going to loosely do the two bolts into the front bracket. Careful as you're adjusting it not to pull the back end off and drop it on your leg or the concrete ground. Okay, so I've just got a couple of turns of thread into those two. Everything else looks like it pretty much lines up. So for the four fixings through those tabs, uh, I was talking about earlier on the rock slider, you have this insert nut, it's basically an eight mil thread on a little rectangle of steel, and an eight mil bolt with a big countersunk washer so that the bolt head um, sits flush and isn't something to get caught, caught on. So underneath in the floor pan of the steel skid plate that comes with the r -Max, there's some little square holes that these get fed up through and then the bolt comes through our rock slider, through the little hole next to the square hole that this has been thread through. And you just need to get them started while holding it like so. Get the four of them like that, and then as you tighten up with a ratchet, these should spin around. And you either use a screwdriver up through the hole to hold it solid, so as you spin the bolt. But most of them actually go up into a little C-channel gusset in the machine. So this will spin around until it bottoms out on one of those gussets, it'll hold itself, and then you can just do the bolt up. Um, easiest way to do the first one though is you can actually reach with this plastic removed to it's the third one from the front so you can it's a bit this side's actually a bit harder but the other side is much easier 
this side's got the fuel tank. But you can have one hand going in through the machine here, and the other hand coming up from underneath. So I'm just trying to line it up. So that's in. Uh, it's a good idea before you get to this stage to just run the bolt through the nut because they're black painted bolts and anodized uh, gal nuts just to sort of clear the thread out so that when you're laying on your back um, just makes it that little bit easier. So this is the forwardmost tab on the rock slider. We're shooting up from underneath the vehicle. You can see the bolt hole through the pan. That's what your bolt goes through. And the square hole in the pan is where you feed through the insert nut to start with. So, that way. so there's your bolts in the frontmost bracket through the chassis rail. It's your first one, your second one. That's what it looks like when it's got one in. That's the third one that you can actually reach from outside the vehicle through the removed plastic. And then you one at the back. So the three that I don't have any bolts in yet actually go up into a C channel. So those insert nuts, once you get the thread started, you should be able to let them go and they'll spin around until they hit inside that C channel. They'll lock themselves and then the bolt will do up. So from above, get my shadow out of the way. From above, that's sort of your, your insert nut ends up inside that uh, square box. And then the rock slider looks like so on top. So what we're gonna do now is feed an insert nut through the square hole getting the thread to line up with the bolt hole. A small screwdriver comes in handy here. So you can line the thread up, pivot it around a little bit. And then just holding the screwdriver next to the tail of that insert nut, just to hold it from spinning as you start your thread with the bolt. So we're gonna install the three of these from underneath, the insert nut with the bolt. Before you do though, a little trick that we found out is the holes in the frame, or the pan, are only slightly bigger than the eight mil bolt that we're trying to feed through. So, at first it sort of wants to thread through that hole itself. Now it's not thick enough or actually threaded so it's not a fixing point if you just run the bolt through it a couple of times until you can just push it in and out give you that extra bit of clearance it'll make life much easier when you're actually trying to get it onto the insert nut Now that you've got all four of those underside ones loose, so it can't come off, we'll start bolting on the two at the back. First batch of these show using the dome head bolts in this location, uh, because this was originally developed for the four seater. Unfortunately in the two seater, the um, brackets in the way to be able to do up with an allen key 
So it's actually the hex heads that get installed here. Yeah, we've got that rearmost one just started. This is why we left the bracket itself a bit loose, just so we can pivot around to get a bit easier uh, alignment. It's hard to see with that door closed. Now, I know you guys can't see anything now, but just want to align the thread in the bracket. There we go with the rock slider hole itself. So once you've got those two started, just nip that up a bit. Because of this bracket, you can't actually use the socket set. You need to use a spanner. Now if you've got a ratchet spanner, even better. But if you've only got an open or a ring, still doable. Okay, so once you've got those started with a few threads in to hold it, um, you know, there's still a bit of wiggle movement in that. Because we're going to join the bull bar to the rock sliders, you don't want to crank everything up just yet. The big trick is always to get everything together and then tighten it all up at the end just for ease of fitting and you can make some minor adjustments if required. So we'll move on to the fender protection or the side rails that join the rock sliders to the bull bar. So first steps to fitting the side rails or fender protection is removing the two ROPS bolts from the frame. These OEM bolts are replaced by longer bolts in the kit. So you won't actually need to reinstall those. I wouldn't throw them away, those. They always come in handy for something down the track. So we have a replacement bolt with washer. That'll go through the skin on the bracket of the side rail. Then behind the side rail goes the spacer. That goes through the ROPS connection and a washer and nut on the back side. So bolt and washer on the outside of the plate. Spacer through the ROPS connection, nut and washer on the back side. Now, you need, because of the spacer and once once in, you don't have enough room to get it in. It's easiest to preload both bolts up. And as you saw getting the OEM bolts out, there can be some pressure on these ROPS connections at times. Both those bolts have now come out through the back of the second ROPS tube. Again, leaving everything nice and loose so we can attach the front connection here to the bull bar and then the lower connection down to the rock slider. Just putting the washer and nut on the back side of those so it can't fall out. Then we'll move to the front and bolt it loosely to the bull bar. Okay, now we've got the ROPS connection loosely bolted together. We'll loosely bolt this front connection between bull bar and side rail. Now the plate on the side rail itself has horizontal slots. And on the bull bar itself, there's vertical slots, which gives you in, out, up, down movement to get up where you need it to be. And then the last connection for the side rails, it's just another dome header bolt into the thread that's pre-installed on the rock slider. Left and right, are mirrors of each other. It's just a, uh, well, basically exactly the same fitting, instru fitting instructions, um, but the brackets are mirrors of each other. Um, the rock sliders are mirrors of each other. 
side rails and mirrors of each other. So it's all the same, just opposite. Um, but that's the basic kit put together. Now you go along and align it, bolt it up tight, um, torque it all up, job's right. With this kit, we recommend starting at the rock sliders. You want to get the front of the rock slider as far away from the machine as possible. Um, and then tighten it up in position. Moving onto your side rails with the lower connection and then your ROPS connection. And then do the same for the other side. Then your connection from the front of the side rail to the bull bar. And then finally the bull bar to the chassis. That'll give you the, the easiest way to get the best alignment between all the pieces while keeping clearance to the machine itself. I'm going to do that now and we can see the finished product. Now you got your bull bar on. If you installed it with the winch, uh, as we spoke about earlier, once the bull bar's on, you can pull your wire back through, through the cutout in our scrub bar. Bolt your roller fair lead on that you pulled off the OEM bar onto the front of our scrub bar. Reinstall your hook. That's that side of it done. And don't forget to hook up your two wires that we disconnected before. So everything will be operational again. Um, always good to have a test of your winch before you need it. So once you hook it all up, Make sure in is in, out is out, because you don't want to wait until you're actually in need of the winch to work all that out. 